death kiss. Not oh. to be mistaken with death wish. There's here's the thing. First off, Renee Perez. He's back, back at it again. Well, he's always been at it. Definitely not. I haven't seen a lot of Chris Farley. Yes! So. Yes! Oh, that's very blue. And you know who else is back at it is, um, Charles Bronson. Um, there's this guy, this guy named Robert Bronzy, who is actually just Charles Bronson. Like, it is literally a reincarnation. It is a one-to-one -one carbon copy of Charles Bronson. And he's dead, but not really. It's like a reincarnation. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. But he's also our main character. <laughs> I'm so ready. So, okay. We start off with a big dude trying to light a cigarette. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> Not a word is spoken. And then Robert Brownsey comes around the corner with some matches. However, plot twist, um, big guy trying to smoke a cigarette is a pedophile? You here for cheese pizza? Yeah. Oh no! So he beats the guy, he knocks him out. Got high quality. <clears throat> zip ties him. Yeah, he takes the time to zip tie him, yep. Oh, he's like zip tying him up, so if he wakes up then, yeah. Oh, that's right, he didn't kill him. And there is a girl inside being trafficked. <laughs> Some parts have really made my skin crawl. Like yeah. it was. Uh... Yeah, yeah. And he, you know, the girl, he girl's in there, and a guy comes out. <laughs> and then he runs outside, and he. <laughs> Went out of his way to restrain him, and then just came out and shot him anyway. So, I don't know. I'm not really sure what that was about. It's the Gears of, Gears of War. War! What? Excuse me? And then it cuts to a little house on the prairie. And it's got a mother. She looks like Deb from Dexter. That's what I think of. You're right. Well, we're going to call her Deb from Dexter. <laughs> All right, yeah. So she has a daughter, and the daughter is in a wheelchair. We'll just call her daughter. And the mother is, like, really guilty about it or whatever. But And, and for some reason, she's receiving these packages in the mail full of money. Money. She's kind of like, oh, who could it be? And Charles Bronson is looking at her with a telescope. <laughs> like, not binoculars, but, like, a telescope. Like he's a pirate. Apparently, it's been going on for a while, and that's how she got this house. So she's in this nice house, and she's, like, getting this money, and it's definitely from Robert Bronzy, who maybe watches her from afar every time with the telescope. But she takes the money, so she really doesn't ask too many questions. All this open space. Where he gets the money, I don't know. I thought it was because he was looting all the people he murdered, which he, which does, he does a lot of. He kills two guys who are um, going to pick up drugs. How much money you got? Six. Six dollars. Bullets. He strips them clean. He takes everything. But then he just goes and he burns all of the valuables. Except for the cash, I suppose. So it's like, but why did he rob them? It's like, I don't... It makes no sense. If he sees the phone, he took the phone off one of the guys he killed, and he goes to burn it, but he gets the text message. And it says, like, oh, I got... I really have to sh... <laughs> yeah, basically, that's what it says. <laughs> and he goes, be right there. And so it cuts to this, you know, big guy... He's really sweaty. He's, his hair looks fake. 
He's in an airport. And he's in pain. He's holding himself. Like he just got off the plane. And Robert Browns is kind of sneaking up to him. He kind of just goes up to him. And they ex- they have a little exchange. <laughs> I don't know you, man. And Robert Bronzy walks away completely free. Nobody yeah, touches you see him. In the background, like kind of like yep. he does this thing whenever he assaults somebody, where he kind of stops, looks around a little bit, and then just kind of hobbles off. Um, Alec Baldwin's brother, Daniel Baldwin, is in this movie. Do you know what a keister bunny is? And what he does is he plays a radio talk show host. Or squabbling married couple store. Woohoo! He's got all the microphones. <laughs> He's got a lot of microphones on him. He basically gives a commentary of the movie, but it's also a political commentary. And some of the stuff he says is really bad. They want us to spend precious court time and law enforcement resources to keep promiscuous women safe from revenge porn. The media demands that we be outraged by racism, which is by their account the worst thing in the world. But are any There were multiple points at which he went from like kind of just reciting points of the movie to going on like a very uncomfortable racial tirade. She was approached by two young African American men. They both looked like street thugs. It was hard to tell where the script ended and Daniel Baldwin began judge people by their looks sure so it's hard to tell if like he was in character or if like he's just like a wild racist it's racist to assume the snake is poisonous but it's just lunacy he just rants he just rants on and on and it's way out of place why be judgmental why judge me robert bronzy is watching the the the, the woman and her daughter again and a homeless guy comes up and steals their mail, which is where he put the money. He basically pulls a gun at him and tells him to run away. Run. So then Deb catches him putting the money back in the mailbox. Excuse me! (laughs) And he says he's a delivery guy, and they have tea. Nice property. It cuts to another familiar face of ours, Richard Tyson. Well, well, well. His goons bring in this kid, Young Billy. Young Billy. Here in the flesh. Young Billy did not do his job. Heard she wanted to see me. Because he did not do his job, Richard Tyson's son is going to prison for life. Stone cold killer. Fuck you, man. Hey, I fucking thought he was, boss. I am. I can kill. And Richard Tyson's like, you're a stone cold killer. I'm going to cut your balls off. I'm going to cut his little off and throw it in the fire. And then his goons got him in the in the headlock and he's like, no, yeah, we, we should make him prove it. <laughs> Let him do the guy. The guy. Richard Tyson takes him in the back and he's like, oh, do it. And you got to do it with this baseball bat. Mm. The guy can't see what who it is, so he's just like, you know, kill him. So he's like, oh, and he goes and he starts bashing his head in. And Richard Tyson's just like, ooh, yeah. Yeah. So Richard Tyson tricked young Billy into killing his dad. Please, God, no. Daddy. The performance he gives is absolutely incredible. Dad, your dad was a square guy. He worked at that textile plant for what? 20, <laughs> oh 30 years Lord. just he's... to put food on the table for you? He brings his wife out. So then he's like, oh, oh, your atonement time is not done yet. So he rips off her shirt. Oh, 
Rene Perez back at it. The classic Rene Perez trope, you know, tasteless <laughs> boobs. <laughs> We've dealt with this before, you know. Those look fake. While Richard Seiss is doing that, Robert Bronze comes out of nowhere and shoots him in the <laughs> arm. Oh, yeah. One of Richard Tyson's goons is holding young Billy. Kill him, man! And just kills him. It just Bam. kills young Billy. I don't know him. <laughs> Richard Tyson escapes with a bleeding from his arm. Robert Bronzy and one of his goons have a shootout in the middle of a junkyard of cars. Robert Bronzy wins, he shoots him, and the he, the guy falls in a dirty puddle. And uh, starts like crawling away. Robert Bronzy goes back to the warehouse and he grabs young Billy's wife and drags her to this dying guy in the puddle. Shoot him. And then the guy in the puddle, the goon in the puddle, he's like, oh, kill me, shoot me. F you do it. F you shoot me. F you shoot me. F you. <laughs> and then uh, Robert Bronzy <laughs> runs away. He just kind of runs into the middle distance. And then he goes to the house again. Do you have a big dog? And then she goes, oh, stay for lunch. And, and then he comes in with a big ass gun case, and she's like, Oh, is that a. Do you play keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> is that a keyboard case? How'd you know? We get a really good piece of backstory information here because she goes, Um, I don't think you should be sending me money because I used to do a ton of drugs. I was on my way to my dealer's house. And I had Isabel with me because I was an irresponsible mother. And there was a shootout inside, and a bullet inside hit my daughter's spine. You kind of immediately are like, oh, so, like, Robert Brownsey must have had something to do with that. After that, they shoot a shotgun. <laughs> they shoot a lot of soda. Not very good. <laughs> Legacy! Oh! He didn't even aim it. Legacy! And then after that, it goes back to Daniel Baldwin. The other one shot her baby in the face. Bam! True story. So he, he says a lot of more oh, crazy so nonsense. Answer the question, someone for me! What happens next is there's a, a a guy. He breaks into like this little just drive drive in oh, you're restaurant. About that. Oh, that's right. The guy breaks in and like demands money. Give me the motherfucker right now. Robert Bronzy just shows up. I'm gonna blow your motherfucking head off. You empty the cash register. Where is it? And chases him into a soccer field and just shoots him. We're missing one big scene. Go ahead. It was the scene that they Robert Brownsy shows up in some nice clothes. <laughs> He's just standing there and letting this happen. It's happening. It's happening. Am I what you want? <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, just, he, he just walks out just classic Rene Perez uh -huh. and then we get a really big revelation after that because Doug Baldwin finishes his third Daniel Baldwin time. Daniel f Daniel Baldwin is finishing up his third little politically fueled tirade we should all rejoice on what a great time it is to be alive when he finishes Robert Bronzy walks in cops haven't grabbed you yet have something for me and he's like oh uh, you're gonna get us caught you're you're like we're, we're doing god's work we're doing god's work 
it turns out that Daniel Baldwin is uh, the Lucius Fox to Robert Bronzy's Batman. And that's kind of like why he was in the movie, I guess. And they wait till the end to tell you that. Wait, I don't know why. Robert Bronzy tracks Richard Tyson to the woods. He's got this guy like tied up to a, to a tree. But you gotta love it out here, huh? He's got some barbecue sauce. He starts spraying it all over the guy. Or the wolves. And then Robert Bronzy shows up. <laughs> Definitely gonna attract predators. Like Captain Morgan. Yeah. I'm already yeah. here. Oh! What? Richard Tyson and his goon, who is not injured yet, um, have a shootout with with Robert Bronzy. He sees the 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 injured goon crawling around and just blows this guy away. And then he runs over, takes his Uzi, and then he shot Richard Tyson. He shoots Richard Tyson in the leg. Then he puts down the gun. And then he wakes up and Richard Tyson's tied to a tree. So you find out that Richard Tyson was the drug dealer who Deb from Dexter was buying her drugs from. When her daughter got paralyzed. What happened was, uh, of course, Robert Bronzy was there to stop him and they got in a shootout. While you and I were shooting at each other, one of our bullets went through your front door. Maybe my bullet, maybe yours. I don't know. So that's why Robert Bronzy was like sending her money is because he instigated the gunfight that paralyzed her daughter. And he felt bad. Yep. We both deserve to die. And then he pours the barbecue sauce on Richard Tyson. Richard Tyson's like, no, 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 no. no. no don't, don't do it. Don't, look, what, why don't, look, why don't we just gonna get rid of all this craziness, all right? Huh? Come on, why don't you just take me to the police? Let the law enforcement take care of it, you know? You know? Come on, man. The law. The law. Let them take care of it. The law. No law. And then it cuts to a stock footage wolf. <laughs> <laughs> it's assumed Richard Tyson gets eaten on the spot. Robert Bronzy walks away. It cuts to... Deb from Dexter and the daughter getting more money from Robert Bronzy, and then Robert Bronzy's walking around stoically with the synth music in the background. Yeah, the music was really something else. And then it cuts to black and it's synth music. Yep, that's really it. Well, I guess we know what time it is. Three, two, one, B. Hey. Listen, I love me some Rene Perez, but, I, you know, I just feel like this is one of his weaker entries, I gotta be honest with you. But e I think even his weakest deserves a B. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm okay with a, with a B. Like, I feel like Richard Tyson really gave a stellar performance. Yeah. And Daniel Baldwin. <laughs> and Daniel Baldwin. B for Baldwin, huh? <laughs> Ah!